going to do that to this barn, the snow on this barn. Yes, the snow on that barn is in shadow, so it can't be light. Most of you have more trouble finding the light and dark than finding the right color. Hate to tell you that, but it's true. Some of the snow melted off. The eve, the eve of that roof must have casted more of, oh, I can't get that darker. I may dark, take a darker red and more green in it, and I'll get a darker shadow. Yeah, I like that better. I like that darker, too. Boy, that gives it some punch, doesn't it? I'm trying to figure out, if, you are, if you're a student of lighting, and how light works, you are a student of painting because a painter makes his paint do to the canvas what the light does to the subject. Now this comes all the way down. Now if this hangs out more, and this is further back, I think this is going to be out here more. And that makes this shed look as though it comes, it has a, more of an eve. What a funny language. Eve just seemed as though, oh, anyway. And there's some distance, some distance stuff back in here. Oops. And the dif distant field of snow where the light is striking it. This is trees. Trees in the distance. Come on, try to look like trees in the distance. That didn't do it. A little bit too soft. A lot of people think that painting a snow scene, the, the hard part is painting the snow. I'll tell you what the hard part is. I'll tell you what I have trouble with. Now, if this is in shadow, from the barn, this barn is also casting its shadow on the snow. Well, a shadowed snow is violet or blue. And so we have a shadow here up against that. Also, I'm going to have all these rocks and there's going to be trees that would also shadow the, the foreground. I'm going to paint in the snow all in here in dirty snow because I would like to have it more dimension than just flat. So if I paint it in in one value of white, it's going to be flat. So I put it in a darker snow color first.
I can more easily add lighter tones of snow. Here it is white with ochre. to show where it's piled up. Now I need some darks. The light is coming from this way and so this side, these side planes of these rocks. Are dark. Casting shadows too on the snow and catching a lot of light because the snow hit the top of the rocks. But around the rocks was some kind of grass. Now I'm going to step back a minute and see how this looks from a distance before I show you the most difficult part of doing a winter scene. I step back from this and it's amazing how much you can see from a distance, how your mistakes show up much well, more drastically in, in all their glory. I have to tell you about something I've read. It was written in 1468. Imagine how long ago it is. And it's a quotation of an Italian painter. And he said, it's amazing how the ugliness of your picture shows up so well when you look at it in a mirror. I have a mirror in my studio and I step back and look at it and see it and see it in reverse. And it, uh, it, it's very, very helpful for you to be the happy schizophrenic that you have to be to be a painter. You have to be optimistic and aggressive enough to actually paint it. And then you have to be um, critical enough uh, to be able to destroy it. So you are you know, creating and destroying, creating and destroying until you can hit a balance. You all know about, I have quite, I'm quite famous for my soup. <laughs> painting, making soup and painting are the same to me. Painting is made of ingredients. I have paint and I have color and I have um, a tone and I have everything and all and, and the thickness of the paint, all these ingredients add up to telling a picture story to appeal to someone's visual taste. Well, look at the ingredients you have to use to make soup. You have to have a, um, uh, some kind of liquid, that's the stuff itself, and you decide whether the soup's going to be thick or thin. It depends on how you're going to put your, put your, you know, your paints together, or the way you put your, your ingredients in, in your soup together. And all the things, the ingredients that you use, the vegetables and the meat and whatever, is all done for the sake of the soup's focal point. And that's its characteristic. It's either pea soup or vegetable soup or minestrone soup or, or borscht. And so, I'm using all the ingredients that I have, and all the ingredients I have are really just shape, tone, and color, to try to present this. Cooking is easier. I had stepped back and noticed that I hated the roof of the barn. The roof of the barn, just here I had all this white. I didn't have that before when I did the barn. When if the barn is tipped and the light's coming this way, I have a feeling that this would be white. This would be light too. 
So I'm going to, st I, 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 I wipe that gray off and I'm going to change this to snow covered. And it's plausible to me that it would be that way. And then I got an idea. It would be kind of nice to stop these lines and make it look as though there were some icicles hanging down. Wouldn't that be fun to do, hmm? It's all how you look at it, judge it. It's all the same as when you, when you taste the soup and you say, ooh, it's flat. It needs some salt. Now, those corrections done a little bit. Here is the difficult part of doing a winterscape. Tree, leafless trees. Oh, a tree is fine with a whole bunch of leaves on it. You just make a green lollipop. <laughs> but leafless trees, you have to know the tree's anatomy. And also, you have to be very careful where these trees intersect your subject. For instance, I would never plant a tree that would go along that line. That line is too important. And I also wouldn't put the tree in a way that it would divide the barn, the barn in half. So I think right there would be fine. And another tree here, and I wouldn't make them equidistant. And another tree here. And you know what? I think I've run out of time. So I'll go into trees another time with more care because this lesson was primarily on white, not on winterscapes. I don't like to paint winterscapes. It's just too, it's just too cold. On real cold days, I don't paint. I make soup. <laughs>